this video is going to be geared predominantly to both amateurs and professionals who uh, have vast experience and quite advanced with duplex operations. We're going to talk about internal desensitization in a duplex system. My old mentor way back when used to call it systems pooping in its own mess kit. I've always stuck with that term. And what it is, is you've got an issue typically and most of the time in the antenna system, somewhere between the transmitter and the antenna itself that's causing the transmitter to get into the receiver. Typically because something's loose, causing some arcing. Other causes also, but that's the primary cause. A typical sign that this is happening is you're listening to a repeater and you know its output power and you know what it typically sounds like and you know how typically you can get into it. And you're in that spot where you usually are and somebody tells you you're noisy. And several people might tell you you're noisy. You can even turn on another radio, say you're on a, a walkie-talkie in your house or next to your vehicle. You can bring up a fixed station on a good antenna or a mobile radio and you can key up on the repeater and hear it yourself. You can hear the noise yourself. Make sure that your radio that you're talking into the repeater is not desensitizing the receiver that you're trying to listen on. Also, that's another common mistake. You gotta make sure that isn't happening. And then what you can do is you can take that, especially if it's a walkie-talkie, you can move it around and you can hear your signal until it noises up. And slowly move that walkie-talkie around or put your hand around the antenna or whatever you need to do to get that signal even more noisy until you reach that threshold and it drops. Hold that spot. Let that hang time drop and as soon as the hang time drops, the transmitter blurps back up because what happened is when the transmitter shut down, when the repeater transmitter shut down, the desense went away, thus the receiver sensitivity came back, which bumps the transmitter back up. The desense immediately comes back up, blocking your signal to the receiver. The receiver squelches. The transmitter hang time drops again, and then it does it again. So that's a real easy way to do it in the real world to find out if you've got that situation. We're going to do it now on a system that I know has some of this desense going on, and we'll put some numbers with it. There's about a 20 dB quieting signal. Now let's noise it up. Let's go to where it drops. Just drop. Now let's hear it come back. So let's put some numbers to it here. Right on the edge. Now let's back our signal off till it quiets. Notice it comes back up. We got at least 2 dB of descents. We got at least 4 dB of descents. We got at least 6 dB of descents. We've got at least 8 dB of descents. This is system's pretty sick. There, 10 dB and it doesn't come back up. So we know we've got somewhere around 8 to 9 dB of descents on this system here. And what that means is if you're running a radio that let's say has an effective radiated power of 50 watts talking into this system and you're at a point where you're getting real noisy and falling out of it you're going to have an effect have to have an effective radiated power of in upwards of 500 watts in order to overcome that descent that's the difference here so i'm going to have to go into this system here and uh, start First with an ISO T at the receiver, some of you might be familiar with that test, and a load. 
and put a load on each component in the antenna system until we can find where that desensitization stops. All the way up to the antenna if we don't find it from there. That would take a tower rigger to go up, disconnect the antenna, put a load uh, where the antenna is connected at the end of the feed line. And if there's desense there, then we know it's in the antenna system, I mean the feed line system somewhere. It's the cabling between the transmitter and the isolator, the isolator and the duplexer, or possibly in the receiver between one of the filters in the receiver, or in the feed line between the duplexer and the antenna, or the antenna itself. So, easy way to troubleshoot that, uh, like I first demonstrated with you, with your ear, or with a simple service monitor or signal generator when you are on site. We're out of sight here, and I'm a couple hundred feet away from the antenna that I'm talking to. You always want to make certain that the test equipment antenna, or whatever you're testing with, when you kill the signal here, is line of sight to the antenna that you're dealing with. Because just walking around a vehicle, moving around, or whatever, can uh, false your signal and your, your results somewhat. So you can see there's my test antenna. And there's the repeater antenna.